Guys, we are at Roots Tattoo Studio in Beaumont today. And uh, this is a live that we are doing from Roots in Beaumont. The artist is going to be Sam. And he's been tattooing for a while now. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Uh, we have Sam in his studio out here getting ready. So how long have you been doing it? And... I've been tattooing for 25 years. And so normally there's no like for artwork you can go to school and stuff like that, but for tattooing there's no. Well, yeah, there are there are schools that you can go to. I okay. Mean, I don't know. I guess you'd have to find an incredible one or, or right. whatever. I, um, but back when I started, there was maybe one or two. In the, state that okay. offer that but it wasn't really looked at like a like a thing that you wanted to do you would want to get an apprenticeship by someone who was seasoned already so right yeah. so that's the entire like how long did you apprentice with them uh, that's that's a that's a whole story in itself uh, uh i never really went through a uh, the best apprenticeship i guess you would say right. um, I got the opportunity, didn't realize my opportunity, somewhat ruined it, and then for the, from there on I had to learn on my own. Oh, know? okay. And so uh, my apprenticeship was short-lived, it was maybe about four months, five months maybe. And, and yeah, you were one of the lucky and, ones, uh, I guess. Well, I, in a way, in a way, I guess if I would have, uh, if I would have actually like took it, took, more, took it more serious, or actually even understood that I was in an apprenticeship, right. which I didn't. Um, <laughs> I guess I would have uh, accepted the things that came to me a little easier. Right. So when you're in an apprenticeship and, and someone tells you, hey, clean up after me. Right. Uh, I'm waiting for somebody to say please or, or you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, not understanding that that was my duties. Right. I was like, do it yourself. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and that's what ruined my apprenticeship because I... I didn't have an idea that I was supposed to do these things, right? You know, and so um, yeah. So based on that, I had to learn the hard way, you know. <laughs> so uh, the apprenticeship normally, how long does it take for uh, guys to get the apprenticeship or go through that? I guess it would depend on the artist, okay. uh, the seasoned artist. They they might put someone through for a year. Somebody, some people will go for two years. So it really just depends on how they want them to learn. You okay. Know? If you're, uh, yeah, so I guess that would be it. I, I don't want to say that it's it's supposed to be one way or the other, but it's basically according to the artist themselves. So is it normally like unpaid, right? Normally it's unpaid, unpaid right? Right. right? Sometimes sometimes if you're an apprentice, you'll you'll end up getting tips and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Here because uh, you're helping people set up or you're tearing them down or right. whatever it takes, you know, and you, you might get tipped out at the end of the day here and there for helping. Right. But, um, yeah, uh, for the majority of the part, you're in school, you know, you don't, right. you pay for school. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, so have you always been in Beaumont or have you done um, other studios? Well, actually, no, yeah, I've, I've been, uh, in a, in a couple other studios. I started in Marino Valley. Okay. Um, at Dave's Tattoo. It was uh, what's called Dreams and Ink. Okay. Um, that's where I first got my apprenticeship. And then uh, after that, I uh, I started at a, sh a shop over here in Banning. It was owned by another guy. His name was uh, Mike uh, Screaming Mimi Tattoo. Right. I then took over after he left. Um, I changed the name. It was Bullseye Tattoo for, for a good 10 years. Right. We shut that down. Um, I went to work at Artistic Element in Yukaipa uh, for about okay, yeah, yeah. about seven, eight years, about maybe eight years, I think. Right. Um, and then uh, for a couple of years, I, I just kind of went here and there and tattooed at, at friends' shops here and there. And um, about three years ago, we, Mike and I, my partner, right. uh, we opened up this spot. So there's one shop that I know that um, they've been talking about. That guy was from, what's that, Tattoo Ink Masters, uh -huh. and I think he's in Claremont, Upland. Um, there's probably, there's the, the guy a, with the beard. Uh, okay, so you're may maybe talking about uh, uh, Corey Miller? Yes. Corey Miller, yeah. he plays in the band as well, and he's yeah. Yeah, an awesome tattoo artist for sure. Yeah. I've had a chance to meet him once or twice, but don't really know him personally. Right. Yeah. Have you done any competitions and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, 
back. Well, it's been a while. I haven't done any conventions in a while, and um, or entered any shows right, yeah. as far as competitions in a while. But I have my uh, my art. My uh, no, there, yeah. Posted on the wall there. Um, I was fortunate enough to win a few for different categories, and right. yeah, I just kind of we just kind of fell off going to conventions for a while, especially after COVID. It yeah, it kind of shut down. So, yeah. but they're they're back up and, and going again. So who knows? Maybe this year we'll jump in one or something like that. Right. We'll see what happens. I'll let you set up. Yep. And I'll just keep it out there. I guess. Yeah. yeah no worries. Oh, man. let me get out of your way. Yeah, 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 don't worry. I'm gonna have my car. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have uh, Scotty over right now in a second. The entire thing. I can give you one of these tables as well. Do you want one of these? No, that's fine. It's going to be good. Gets, yeah. The whole, the whole up and down hook. And then uh, I'll sign Priya as well. When we're working, if you want to get up and get yeah. it. Yeah, I change it from time to time. Come on over, Scotty. Thank you for letting them come in. All right, what will you do? Who will you know? Head on the side. Head up here? Yeah, you can lay on the back. Put you guys inside. Is your gold up or off? Or? Off would be all right. Yeah, that would be, be better. So we did this one a, uh, a little while with that, maybe about a few months ago, right? Are you talking about this one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. And then uh, today we're going to be working on, on this side over here. Look around there. So you normally do portraits? Um, I do anything as far as uh, realism or... Right. Well, pretty much anything, but realism is my favorite. Oh. You have a lot of uh, art on you. Yeah.
are also welcome to bring the chairs around or however you want to sit the angle you want to sit in be, be just fine. Uh, she's fine I guess and if, if during the process you want to explain whatever you're doing uh -huh. that would kind of be great kind of so Basically, the way you're filming is is uh, more of an introductory type of right. thing for, for your viewers. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So it's kind of the because we have a lot of international viewers. Okay. So since we have a lot of international viewers, um, it's kind of um, some of them are new to this. Yes, are new to it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what I'm starting with right now, what we normally do is uh, we'll clean the area real well. And if there's any, any hair on the surface, we shave it all off, which it looks like Scotty made it. Did you do this for me already? Yes, sir. It looks like it. Yeah, you did a good job. So he's already cleared off the hair. Um, other than that, I'm just going to go in here and draw in a little bit over here that I need to, to add. And then uh, we'll get to it. So like are you doing a touch up or is it? Uh, this would be considered a second session. Oh, okay. So, so finish up basically, yeah. I okay. guess you would say. You know.
Hey Alexis. Would you mind grabbing me a little jar of ointment from over there? Whichever has uh, availability. Does that one still have some there? Yeah, I'll take it if, if it's still there. Oh, no, I'll take that one. Yeah, that was, uh, Okay. So the stuff she just gave me, we, uh, we apply a little bit on the skin in order for it to uh, create a barrier uh, between the skin and the ink. So that way when you, uh, when you tattoo and you go to wipe it away, it, it removes easily without, without smearing into the skin and becoming uh, dry.
what are you doing now so what i did was uh basically clean the area well so that i could get another better view at it um clean the excess off and uh adding more of the appointment to keep the, the barrier if, if you notice over here it started to smear and kind of stick to the skin well because there was no uh that area right so uh, yeah it's just kind of keeping the keeping the area uh visible okay Yeah, typically, uh, a piece of this size would take a couple sessions or to complete. To add the color and everything? Yeah, just because it's, uh, it's so time consuming, you know. And when you do realism, there's a lot of hidden, there's a lot of hidden tones that you don't really see. Uh, you're so used to looking at, you know, the, the natural tones and shapes of everything that you really don't break it down. Mm. The shading and everything, right? And yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to it. There's so many round parts of the face and lighting to go with it. So. So, do you add your own, or do no, you just copy as is? I try to do it as is because uh, because you're giving a natural light tone, and you're getting everything that is used from the picture. Um, I feel like I feel like there are there are ways of doing portraits where you where you use like a basic tone for the faces. Um, but I just I guess I prefer. Right. But there are there are uh, artists who just kind of give it a a, um, a real tone, but but more more of an even tone, you know. And it basically changes the lighting of a uh, of piece. You need a good pair of eyes to add, like to make it as is. Yeah. It's, uh, well, it's definitely a practice. You have to, you have to do it all the time for understand it. It takes a little work. So, how many hours did you practice, or how many days before you went live on a human body? Oh, um, so that's a good question. Um, before I before I started tattooing, I would. I would take pictures from magazines and, and redraw them um, just because I wanted to understand the you know, tones and all that kind of stuff, how to make them feel. Um, but ever since I was, I want to say maybe like eight years old, like when I first did a, a copy of a photo, it was, uh, it was a, uh, one of the Dodger players uh, back in that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just uh, I thought I did okay at it. I was always impressed with myself at that age, and I was like, "Wow, I can do this again." You know? and so ever, ever since I was that age, I would just copy face and animals and that kind of thing because I felt like it was something I can grasp. You know? So over the years, I guess before I actually tattoo uh, tattoo the portrait, I, I may have. I may have practiced. Uh, I don't know. I may have, I may have practiced the techniques a little bit, but I think I just jumped right in. I guess you'd say you'd say the first one didn't come out all that great, but but the guy was willing to let me do it, and uh, yeah, so I just gotta be grateful for that, I guess. So you practiced on him how many yeah. times? <laughs> well, I did the portrait, and it was actually on a side like this, but it was probably only this big. Yeah. But uh, how many times you had to practice before I you know, pop? I, I, I uh, tattooed man. that same one maybe like four times. Okay. Before I <laughs> before I said like, all right, I don't want to touch it anymore because I think I'm making it worse. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so do you do a lot of cover ups? Oh yeah, yeah, cover ups, portraits, uh, real life 
the roads are big. Especially uh, in small towns because a lot of people who practice at home and right. end up having to, you know, switch it up or add to it or help it out or whatever. So, it's, yeah, uh, the roads have been a huge part of my career. <laughs> So, like, how many actually, how many tattoos tattoos did it take you to meaning uh, like that? You know that you have done a perfect job and you know, to where I've got to where I'm comfortable. Yeah. Where I'm, where I'm, honestly, I think I'm learning every time. Hmm. I, I don't think that I'm comfortable yet, and I still feel like there's uh, I still feel like there's a lot to learn. And it just obviously it just takes experience to keep, to keep practicing. I feel like my my drawing, like drawing on paper and painting and that kind of thing, is taking a backseat for a long for a long time. So when you're not doing that kind of stuff, right, really, it's going to take a little longer. Um, you know what it is to practice. You know, but so you have to be good in drawing to tattoo, right? It helps. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think that you have to be the best artist to tattoo. I feel like there are some uh, tattooers out there that are um, really good at copying things and, and you know, uh, repeating something, I think, which is, which is an art in itself. Like, so I don't think you have to be the best uh, drawer just to become a tattoo artist, but it definitely helps. And then what do you enjoy the most in tattooing? Definitely this, uh, like doing a realism portrait, I would say. Uh, but um, I mean, I think what keeps us, what keeps us going, but we, what we get out of it is, is uh, gratification of, of people loving their artwork, you know? They do something that somebody uh, appreciates and loves. It feels good, you know, and you got to do that. You got to do your job, and it's that criteria. So, did you have any difficult customers? Sorry? Difficult customers? Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Over the years, I mean, uh, not everybody is equipped to be tattooed. Yeah. In the least, in the it really varies between people. I think everyone has a different tolerance. The way you see him sitting here and not making any noise, yeah. some people will be squirming around. It's out of control movement, you know? So it just really depends on the person and, and mentally. And... So girls are more uh, better or boys than that one? I would say, well, women obviously have a higher pain tolerance when it comes to uh, direct pain like this. I think. Um, I think. I think I've always thought of it like, like when you put a tattoo, you plan it, plan ahead. You're, you're, you know, in your mind, I'm gonna go get pain. You know, and I think women are better at planning that pain. Where men, if it was just a surprise, like you broke your foot or your finger or something. I think we handle that better, you know, better at sudden pain and then collecting that. And then the women, they can plan surgeries in their mind, babies, you know what I mean? Like all this, you know, you're going to go through some catastrophic pain. You're just ready for it. Or I don't know that I could be ready for it like that. <laughs> My husband can't even tolerate our alcohol, you know, liquid on him. He starts screaming before that. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't like it much myself, honestly. Like, 
I like having tattoos, but I don't like getting them. Yeah. Have you tattooed yourself? I have a couple times. And that's that's a whole different thing too. Like it's pretty uh pretty a mental, you know, like you have to really stick in there and finish it, you know. And easily you you can just quit. <laughs> So, I've done it uh, twice. It's definitely not my favorite, funnest thing to do. It's not my favorite. How have you managed to talk and tattoo at the same time? Um, yeah. I think just I always have talked with my clients. Two years, we've always just made conversation through tattooing. It's just become a, a easy practice for me. So, were the clients which are so impatient? How do you handle them? When they're impatient, yeah. Um, I guess it it varies between different clients. Uh, I guess you. Uh, have to come up with some different uh, techniques <laughs> as far as um, conversation. You know? try, to, try to understand where, where they're at. And then bring the conversation forward with that. So I guess it varies. Some people, you don't have to do anything. Like <laughs> so has any client ran, ran away like, from your table? What's that? Has any client ran away, like got up and oh, got up and ran? Yeah, not like that. <laughs> I mean, that would be good, but, uh, no. I've, I've had I've had a couple of clients say, you know what? Let's plan another day. Today, I just can't I can't handle the pain today. You know, even though they even though they sat, you know, several hours before or whatever, and so say, you know, I just can't do it today. The more realistic is. The drama shows like in class. Uh, I don't know, honestly. Like, I, I couldn't tell you what. What? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not talking about the uh, one for the tattoo art. No. I'm talking about the client side of it. From you tattooing, do you think that there, um, this because they always show you the ones that you know and. Can't handle the pain and yeah, yeah, that. I always want to, yeah, yeah, good for TV, you know. Yeah, so is that realistic? And I think, I think maybe like some of it to a point is is realistic, you know, like of course when they're going through the pain, but then of course maybe they could, I don't know for sure, but maybe they were screened because they noticed like, oh, this person's a little more yeah. intense, you know, and that would be good for TV, but uh, I don't know if that's how to do it, but. It, I guess sometimes it looks that way, but it's kind of hard to say. You have to add the drama, right? Yeah, you got to add a little drama to it. It doesn't sell. I guess that's kind of a... I've, I've had people ask me, well, would you want to go on a show like that? I mean, of course, anybody would want to. But at the same time, it's like, man, I really... I don't like. I don't want to be a part of that. I just want to do this. And then it is time bound, also, right? What's that? You get certain amount of time only. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that, that's another thing where where they limit the artist for five hours to do something like this. You know, like that's you're only gonna get so much out of it. You're not gonna get the the best quality. So like. Hours, so, do you think like at the back end there must be like other artists helping on that tattoo, or only the one yes, artist does it? You know, I don't know. That's a good question. I never thought of that. Um, mm. I would assume that it's just that one artist doing it. Um, I don't. I, I would say that. I don't know. They could adjust the time a little bit. They could say, okay, this is a five-hour job, but. Maybe they actually give them certain hours, you know. But I, what I do know is sometimes filming, like 
you could say, okay, this is a half hour show, but it's going to take, you know, an hour and a half or two to film it because you got to stop, you know, okay, start over from this point, and, you know, that, so, so I imagine that there's a, a little bit of adjustment when it comes to the amount of time that gets to be Have you tattooed your wife? My wife? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's, she's, uh, she's got quite a few. Does, it, does she get it for free? Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, that's, a, that's an argument in itself, right? <laughs> like, uh, we, put in a, we put in the time together in life, so that's not free. It, it comes, at a, comes at a cost of your time, you know? So... <laughs> wouldn't consider it free, but it's definitely not paid in cash. <laughs> you know. but, but, I mean, uh, I guess everybody, I guess we take care of each other, right? Yeah, yeah. she gave birth to your yeah, kids. Yeah, uh, she does quite a bit. I might even owe her a few times. <laughs> And your kids want to go in the same profession? Um, no, not necessarily. Um, I have one son who, uh, who, uh, he, he does our work and, and he's dabbled a little bit, bit but, um, uh, yeah, no, he's, uh, concentrating on his family, his kids, and, you know, all that kind of thing, so, uh, definitely will take, take away your time, you know, just having this career. So what? I would say, I think, I've done it a few times, like, I would say like 12 to 13 hours, something like that. That would be like a full back tattoo. Like yeah, yeah, it'd be like large. I mean, and those are the days, like, even something like this, sometimes it takes a good chunk of the day, you know? Um, depending on what time you get started, and then. And, that sort of thing uh, but those 13 hour tattoo days are like 17 hours in the shop right <laughs> so it's not just uh, not just the tattoo time So does your wife get frustrated with your artwork? Like I get sometimes with my husband because um, I'm not into well, art so much. Honestly, like I I um I used to try to go home and and do artwork work and try to practice, and try to but because because it causes you know like a little friction, I just kind of like try to keep it to time to the times where I have time to do it. You know what I'm saying? Without taking time away from home. Right. Because otherwise, uh, man, it's a hard life <laughs> if you uh, you don't make that extra time. You know? But it's either way, it's hard. I'm I'm uh, constantly sitting here in this chair, you know. So even by not practicing artwork at home, I'm still consumed in the time. Now, there's some uh, because I it looks like you're using a pen. Uh-huh. kind of thing, but there's another one where there's like a whole bunch of needles together kind of thing. Yeah, that's what this oh. is. You want to come in close, you can take a look at it. It's, um, this one right here is 17 needles. Oh. And uh, it's basically for shading purposes. Oh. And blending. It's kind of like a flat paintbrush. So do you have to change it or wash yeah, it? Yeah, we, we actually have, uh, these are all disposable. Oh. We throw these away as soon as we're done with them. But we have several different ones that have different, uh, that have different type needles. So this one shades in a little round, a little round uh, field, and this one's more flat. So it just really depends on what the area that you're working with. So when did this Roots Tattoo Studio form? I mean, which year? Uh, we started in 
Well, it started three years ago. And it was we first we first started uh like establishing the place early in the year, and then we had our grand opening in October. But um, it's been three years, and yeah, we're working on our, coming up on our fourth year. That's nice. So you were walking under somebody earlier, or you were? What's that now? Or were you walking under somebody before oh, that? Under somebody before? Um. Uh, yeah. Basically, I was working uh, out in Ipa at an artistic element for um, let's say about nine years or so, and uh, eight or nine years out here. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I've uh, I've owned a shop before. Um, a long time ago, and and, uh, and I've worked for a few people as well. And all been a, a lots of learning experience because I've been able to take all these times and put it together. And, you know, I'll just keep on learning. Right? Like, you know, I mean, yeah, it's not learning. So, right. And you give training also to your employees or something? I haven't, um, like training other people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't um, a really long time. Um, I have had an apprentice before, but uh, I feel like I feel like uh, you have to you have to dedicate time to them, you know, and like taking time out of your own life. You have you have another relationship, you know, so it's not just hey, clean up after. You. Uh, it's a lot more than that. You yeah. have to give them something as well. So I feel like I don't want to take, I don't want to take uh, and mislead anyone like if I have time. You know, I really don't. You know, so I'd rather just be straight up honest. But I can't, I can't be honest. You know? But so, that can be like a alternate profession, right? If you're tired of doing this, you can teach. And... It, it's very well good, I guess. more of a training Hmm. Training program. Yep. So how long does it will, will it take? To, like if your basic drawing skills are good, then if drawing skills are good, you can probably get a within a month, within a few weeks. Uh, yeah, but you will continue the no. so figure out. And learn how to other people and you know, all that. I mean, but basic technique, but you know, running lines. If you're an artist already, probably. Uh, mm -hmm. So because this piece is so large, the first time I that um, I basically got all the changes, you know, the best that I could have for the size piece. And so the second session basically I have the I have the layout already there, I just went and it really smooth everything over. You have to be comfortable with the needle also, right? You can't poke too much and all, right? Well, you, yeah, you definitely, uh, <laughs> you definitely have more fun. Sometimes, sometimes you can be uh, so uncomfortable with it that, that you don't do enough. And you end up having to do twice as much work because mm. you're, not, you're not really putting it Right. Yeah, so, and uh, have any clients developed any allergies? Like sometimes, you know, it doesn't suit your body and you don't know about it. There has been in tattooing history that people will uh, develop allergies. Uh, you can even use them in the Sometimes people are allergic to latex. Sometimes people are allergic to certain treatments. It all has uh, to do with uh, how you feel, what your 
But I know that uh, it's not it's not mentioned very often, but it's uh, it's definitely appreciated and kind of recommended by your tattoo artist that you uh, hydrate well, get a lot of sleep, eat well for a whole night before you come and get a tattoo. But like, maybe take a whole week of doing these things in order for you to heal well and your body to respond to such a problem. Take a take a blood pressure test, you know. Do it, do it all. Do it all. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty important. Yeah, here on the onset, instead of uh, having a cold or a snake or anything like that, don't come. Don't come. And it's not that you need someone to get on the stick, but your immune system is going to break down and you're getting worse. Really good. Has any client sued you? As in, you know. So, you know you are yeah you are uh, that's uh, very common right that's funny uh, a guy tried to a long long time ago it wasn't for something like this it was for something someone else did and this is a video that I thought I could oh, wow. send it to you guys so you can kind of use that would be nice of it, you know? how did you get that I was uh, I had a fear oh So you record every video? Not every, but uh, I figured since you guys were doing it, so it's my deal. Do you have an iPhone? No. No, as an Android. Android. What uh, option? Is it to a phone number or to an email? Email, yeah. J-E-S-T. Yeah. 
It's not, it's everybody's art on it, like different artists and stuff like that, you know, so we got, that is some are mine, some are other artists, yeah. There's a Power Festival also we covered. Oh yeah, the Power. That ladies one is really good. Power, Morongo Power, part 4 is good. Then he makes cocktails, that video is also there, how to make cocktails and all. So let me ask you this on on the tattoo. Uh-huh. Uh there's a little bit of like uh, is this because of the um this the swelling? The swe- it could be it could be the uh the plastic wrap. Okay. It could be the plastic wrap. But uh yeah, I, I just gotta uh wash it down real well. Okay. Get back to it. Yeah, it's all the tattoo swells. Right. Yeah, it's there's gonna there's swelling all throughout it. It's just uh, it could be it could be the plastic wrap that body didn't like sitting on there. Probably allergic to that kind of thing. The red part will go away, or it's part of the painting. I mean, part of the, the redness, tattoo. The redness in the tattoo. Yeah. No, that'll all go away. Oh, it looks good with the red, actually. No, I've, I've had a few tattoos that where they become like, say, for instance, this one. Mm-hmm. When it was all red like that, it like, like kind of wanted it to stay, but it's like it has a little bit of color, kind of thing. Yeah. So how many years before it will fade away? Like yours is a little faded now. I can see. Yeah, yeah. Um, it depends on how dark it actually gets applied. You know. Mm. Um, so you have to do a touch up quite often, or no? No, I've never done a touch up. It's been the same way since I've gotten it. Um, I guess it really just depends on how you want your tattoos to look. You know, if you want them to be dark, dark and, and vibrant, you can always go back through and touch everything up. Otherwise, yeah, you're just gonna deal with it, I guess. Probably it depends on the material you use, also, right? The one which you used on yourself might be different from what is now it's advanced or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. 
Have you ever seen your things? Oh, hair. Oh, okay, yeah. 
Um, it just depends. Uh, sometimes, sometimes people have different uh, situations. Like, if it's a physical situation, then yeah, sometimes the hair doesn't grow back. But sometimes people will just luck too much. And uh, I know that um, <clears throat> I know that growing your eyebrows back is a hard is a hard thing. Like, there are uh, there are different things. Buy that you can, you can rub on that area to, to create, uh, to stimulate, you know, the hair growth and to, and to condition the area, you know, for a healthier growth. But it's, I don't know how easily it grows back, you know. So once you like shave it off and once you do the machine eyebrows, then it won't go back. Well, we don't shave it. Mm -hmm. no. okay. No, we don't do that either. We prefer that you leave whatever it is you grow. We we prefer that you leave it there. <laughs> and uh, sometimes people will have their idea that they should shave it off first. But no, it's better to leave what you have there, so that way you can enhance what you did there already, and it'll have more of a natural look. With a little bit of well, with a little bit of uh, dimension. Having that still, the few pieces of hair there will help. Meaning the entire eyebrow won't be there, right? Right. Like it might not be. Like you might have, like for instance, if you might have just a few hairs that grow and the rest is falling out. Well, we'll go in there and create the rest of the eyebrow. But, but we, like mine is like I have a lot of hair. You, you won't. Uh, I shave it. No way. No way. You just shape it. Up. Shape it exactly. Shape it according to what. If you think that you want a little thicker, or maybe you want it to be a little different shape, then you know, adjust the shape, but not shape it. So we, I have to still get my eyebrows up in the sense that I have to shave it, like you know, the excess hair. Uh -huh. Yeah, that is much good actually. Yeah, it's a lot of less work, especially for people who may, maybe have to use a pencil every every day and, and make it look, you know, fuller. It's it's I guess a lot for them, you know, like they makes some time out of their out of their getting ready. Well, what about friends I have had? They don't have hair there. Yeah. They only have the fake yeah. eyebrow. And it's maybe because they they shave. They probably. Oh. Okay. They probably shave it off for themselves just so that way they can see that. But I guess it really depends on what, what it is. Like sometimes people will come in. I had one thing. She only literally only had like three hairs on each side. And you got to, you know, reconstruct the whole brow. And so I was hoping that she would leave them there. But when she came, she had took them off. And I was like, oh no. She <laughs> took away my. Took away my guides, you know. But um, yeah. So it's definitely recommended that you don't do your eyebrows. But every six months, I think you have to redo, touch up, and you have to come for that. Um, no, it's for for tattooing eyebrows, for touching eyebrows. It's uh every every three to five years. Um, but for microblading. It's, it's more, it's closer to, it might be six months, but at the longest a year and a half. So what, what is microblading exactly? It's basically the same type of, uh, it's basically the same type of needle that we're using for tattooing. The difference, okay. the difference is, is that the way that they solder the needles together, the grouping, mm. for microblading, it solders the needles so close together and right. so tight that there's no flex in between. Okay. It's just hard and it's like blade. Oh, okay. So what you're doing is you're making cut lines with that, with okay. those needles. Um, with, with tattoo needles, they're they're much looser and you're able to create that. You know? And uh, the microblading does not do as much as the the machine eyebrows is a pretty new thing, or it's no? It's been around a really long time. It's just that um, not all tattoo artists pick up on cosmetic tattooing. 
so you don't see it as often in the tattoo industry, but it's definitely been in the cosmetic industry for a long time. I think that you do those portraits also, like one which is not the photo, and from the photo you get the... No, not on this one, right? With the kids and with the pets, right? Caricatures. Yeah. Caricatures. Oh, caricatures. Uh, no, actually, uh, uh, I could try. I could try to, to create them, but I don't think they look as good as what you see when you go to the carnival or somewhere where they do it. You know, like there's a certain technique that to create the, the different features. You know? Whether it be the eyes or the mouth or whatever, the jawline becomes bigger, you know, that kind of thing. I, I don't do all the tricks in order to make that that way. It'd be fun to learn, though. Yeah, you can expand so much, like painting, painting, tattooing. Yeah. So much. The only problem is that it's, it all has to do with time. Mm. You need the time. So, creating that time. Now, hit the hair on, uh, on this portrait, uh -huh. it has like a brownish tint. Uh -huh. Is that the color or is that just the black and gray shading that you've done it that way? You mean uh, on his body? Yeah. It's only because the brownish tint is only because of Oh, okay. But yeah, but uh, as soon as it heals up, it'll have uh, a more of a black ring. Ah, okay. So your beak is pretty thick. Is your beak really thick? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty hooked up. Yeah, but uh, back to tattoo. <laughs> Thank you. I think I got an appointment afterwards. I I got it off. My friend got it like because that was Corona time. Uh -huh. Got it like three months of COVID. Yeah. Yeah, it varies. If you have something smaller beat then you can sometimes get in a little quicker. But um, yeah, if it's uh, something large, you gotta account for the time. Hers was more a customized one. So she had drawn it, so probably that's why. And then your office was closed also, I think. So du during COVID time, how did you guys manage? Uh, we put paper on the window. And did it be enclosed? That's how I did it. I mean, I didn't. This is what I do every day. You know? Right. I, there's no way I can just wait for a government handout. No way in the world. So fortunately, I mean, if you look at it like, like right now, me and my client, if we were the only one, right? I mean, that's much safer than drugstore. True. You know, it's much safer. So I have to mention, we are we are some of one of the only. Since um, in India they had shut down all the liquor stores, and then when they opened it up, they opened it up only for like a couple of hours. Uh -huh. The lines when they opened it up were like yeah. round the block, kind of. Yeah. You imagine, like, a lot of, uh, People need their booze. A lot of addicts, yeah. I think the reason why they didn't do it here because 
It's a riot. <laughs> I'll take it from the store. Can you imagine if the, if the United States said something like, okay, from here on out, uh, all drugs are punishable by death. <laughs> Like they do in Thailand, yeah, like Bangkok yeah, and stuff. In Indonesia, yeah, you know, like you did that here, man. It wiped out the population completely. Really? And then, and then um, drugs become get worse. Yeah, they start using the worst things. People die left and right. They already started with that paternal, yeah, kind of stuff. They already have. Like they do in the Philippines, that guy is given shoot at sight orders. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, so the last resident of the Philippines, if you were a drug dealer or uh, they caught you with drugs or doing drugs, they could just shoot you, like, shoot yeah, spot. right on the spot. That's so wild. Yeah. It's not that long. It's not coming? No? Yeah, it's not coming. Right, well, well, from what you guys were saying earlier, like, uh, things are changing and that kind of thing in a more of a, a peaceful way. Like, it's, you know, you, it's not necessary. You don't have to, people don't feel so threatened. What's the weirdest place you've tattooed at? Um, on the body? Yeah. I guess, I mean, I don't know how weird things are, but uh, I guess uh, private area tattoos are uh, the most uncomfortable. You know, right. But they, get, they do get it done? Oh, it, it happens, yeah. I haven't had to do something like that in a lot of years. I've uh, been able to hook uh, my days up with things like this. <laughs> That's kind of a challenge. You should do it. I know it's uncomfortable. It, it's, it's, uh, um, I mean, now, I mean, Back then, like when I first started that, you, know, you didn't have too much of a choice. It's kind of random, yeah. You have no choice, you gotta kind of do what you get, and that kind of thing. Um, nowadays, like, for instance, uh, I've done uh, mastectomy uh, surgery, uh, like the replacement of the areola and the nipple. For, so that's not the same, but it's, it's definitely a private tattoo, you know, what I'm right? It's more for that person. So doing doing things like that is just like, like just more more comfortable because you know that you're doing something to help someone rather than rather than somebody just wants a, a bunch of 
funny picture somewhere. But it's like you can just consider it smart. Smart. Consider that. Yeah. Like like how doctors operate. Right. Right. Then you won't feel that it's a girl's body. Right. And it really just depends on the mind. this back area here just easy here is it painful here um for the client i would say anything on the back could be pretty tender could be painful mm -hmm. um there's a lot of nerves all of almost all your nerves go to your back area it's fine you know mm -hmm. so you could you could tend to feel that quite a bit no oh, more like the shoulder you know? Oh, the shoulder. Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. You still got, you still got nerves going through there. Like this one. Like you can see the bow on your. Can, can you tap on this? Oh yeah, yeah. Anywhere that will be also difficult. Huh? Anywhere where you have skin. Yeah, so that's a little, a little different. Like, like the foot. It's a thinner, thinner skin, so you have to be more cautious to your depths. And um, how much you over if you overwork or the bone shouldn't break it. Yeah, no, the bone's fine. It's just I think that people tend to to think to themselves like when it goes over the bone, they oh you're you know like it's, it's painful because it's right on the bone. No, your bone doesn't have sensory. It's your it's your nerves and your oh, no. skin. You know that has the sensory. Have you had sleepless nights? Or something? Oh yeah, I think we all, all yeah. artists, even if you're not a tattoo artist, you take yourself on that journey of not sleeping. Our minds are always working. Right. Creative, creative minds. I guess so will any other type, but uh, for different reasons. You know, you could be uh, you could be into math. Numbers will just keep going through your head. Right. And then you get all dreams of all different kind of yeah. drawings and paintings. Yeah. For me, I think I tire myself out so. So much that I don't even remember my dreams. Oh, I'm just too tired. I'm just, when I wake up, I start thinking about it. Do you remember anyone which is interesting? Hardly ever. Hardly ever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a lot of a long time. Right? Pretty much, I remember the last. Uh, so do you remember any 
statues are doing the most interesting. Most interesting. Hmm. Uh, not necessarily the most interesting. Yes, I do a lot of realism, so therefore it's it's just realistic things, you know what I'm saying? So I mean, uh, but well, I guess I've done a. Uh, I like. I think maybe like fantasy art, you know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. That's that becomes a little more uh, intense than than just basically doing a, a realistic piece. So maybe some of those pieces, more of the fantasy style art, where there's like dragons, and, you know, that kind of thing. But it's a lot of detail, but not necessarily realistic. Right. So is this your full time profession or you do something else? Oh, I've done a lot of things. Um, I started when I was 22, actually. So from the time I was 14 to 22, I've been a lot of different jobs. From, uh, you know, the basic uh, yard yard gardening and all that kind of thing to uh, warehouse to retail own uh you call it own hustler the one that the one that tries to make you buy things that you don't want to buy does that <laughs> uh yeah I've, I've, I've done quite a few things for this ace hardware a lot of factory work, I guess. Mm. Bear house and all. So you have to read a lot of books. I see your books also. You're on tattoo and drawing. Uh, well, you can, or you can just do it. <laughs> you know, um, think about it like this. Like the, some of the earliest artists, my guys, and all these guys, they might not have been really looking at too many books. They were just the ones that the books were made of, you know. Mm -hmm. So so it's more or less uh if you have an artistic feel and you can be creative and have the and you have the uh stuff to do it, you know, the tools then just kinda just create, you know. There you find your find your passion. Use your imagination. Yeah. For the most part that's what you Like to say, say that these needles are used a certain way. I don't feel that that's totally true. I feel like you can use them a certain way to get a certain result. You can use them a different way to get another. It really depends on the style of the tattooing you're doing. I didn't know about that. But you just it's just like a pencil. So not everybody brushes their hair the same using the same brush that's you know the same type of situation yeah, i was very bad at drawing they i they failed me in that like failed you at art yeah <laughs> but after my husband like he's interested so i'm getting interested too. it's not that hard and at least painting is easy So you guys been doing some painting? Yeah, he does mostly spin art. He does, then he does three D and, and um, glass painting on glass. Okay. Yeah, you had mentioned that you guys have a YouTube channel. Try to find it. Yeah, if you like anything, then you can. I, I um, buy it from. I, us. I hadn't gone on YouTube for a long time. I have a account. I'll send you the one which has his paintings. That that was the start to our channel, and then he likes to interview other artists.
So we saw your video where you were going to give some gift cards. What's that about? Oh, recently. Um, yeah. So what I did was I have a uh, an old logo that I used to use on the business card, and um, there was just a bunch of cards that I still had. I put some stamps on on, on several of them. I put maybe I think it was like ten or fifteen, like fifteen stacks of cards, like this big, and in each each one. And the stacks had about four or five stamped cards, mm. and I took those and I spread them all throughout uh, from be between uh, Loma and Bannon. And um, so, whoever can, whoever finds these cards, basically, you'll have an opportunity to to win like a buy one get one free tattoo. So it's uh, yeah, it's an opportunity for people to get out there and, and try to get those tattoos that they want to accomplish. Mm. At the same time, I'd give me something fun to do. Mm. <laughs> Mostly, like, uh, it's on portraits, <laughs> no? Yeah, it's it's all for portraits. So it could be a, a standard size portrait, which is not not this standard size is more or less like half the size, okay. or maybe like a third of the size, and um, or uh, mini portraits, which would be more or less like within a three inch little. Three to four inch radius. Mm. So there's several places around town that have these uh, these cards that people can find online. Mm. Mm. That's really generous of you because it's like. Buy one and get one. We need to have to invest double yeah, the we, time. We invest our time, for sure. But um, this is the things that I've always done in order to, uh, to be able to do what I love to do. Get clients and all. Yeah, you know. So in order for people to see what you do, you gotta do it. Mm. If you don't, don't do it, and you gotta see it. <laughs> nice. So you might as well get it out there somehow, some way. Or Whatever, and but yeah, it's just something I've always done. A lot of, lot of my, uh, a lot of my clients over the years, they'll just kind of wait, wait it out, wait, wait in the, wait in the back, and wait for uh, one of those deals to come about, you know, jump on it, you know, which is, I mean, it's appreciated at the same time. It's not, you know, so it's basically on appointment basis only, no? no. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I mean, I could, if, if there was a day where I was, wasn't tattooing and someone came with a, a portrait tattoo, yeah, that's something that could be done right away, mm. immediately. Um, it's like the bigger tattoos where they want to add, you know, different, create a certain background and that. Which also could be done in the same day, but of course, then you're uh, then you're waiting a little, little longer. All right. You know, somebody told me that when you're getting a tattoo, uh -huh. you shouldn't have any alcohol or drugs in your system because it can affect it can mix with the ink or whatever is that uh well i mean there's different uh, scenarios on that i guess but um mostly what i what i prefer is for people to not drink the day before like okay. if you're partying the night before and you have quite a few drinks until midnight it's going to take some time for the blood to to you know to get rid of all of that alcohol so right. That's when you, uh, if you get a cut in the morning, you're going to bleed a little bit more than, than normal, oh, okay. you know. And so I prefer that, that people didn't drink heavily the night before and drink a lot of water instead, and, you know, just kind of be ready for your tattoo. Um, but uh, during the tattoo, like, I know some people don't like it, but it, I don't feel like it affects, it affects the tattoo so much during because it's going to take some time for it to thin your blood and, you know, do all of that. Um, the only way that it does affect that same day 
is when the client doesn't sit still and now it all starts affecting them you know okay. then it starts to become a problem you would think it would be the other way around because there would be a little more numb off yeah but, the, uh, but sometimes they're so numb that they don't be still oh, okay they, they, they're like ah, talking and moving and, and they're like hey hold on a minute <laughs> you know, it just gets to be too much and so they get into party mode that's when the tattoo session kind of gets over <laughs> so i try to i try not to enough that people get wasted and we're not going to tattoo very, very long right as somebody like you tattooed them and then they are about to pay and they run away <laughs> something like that oh no 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 nope, not yet <laughs> hopefully never that would be fun to right? you chasing uh, the road <laughs> why not it might not be fun <laughs> do you have guns or something no 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 we ain't going to shoot nobody over the money <laughs> no Uh, you go, you're not going to report it also <laughs> um, I, i don't know honestly like it depends it depends on the situation you know? <laughs> maybe if you're not going to report you should do it every day i might have to go get it from him but <laughs> might require not reporting <laughs> you know but no it's definitely <laughs> that's that has happened i mean we we we've had situations you know like i think with anywhere like you get to the counter to pay and your credit card don't work you know we know it's a situation like that where you know, they'll come back later and have to pay you like somewhere somehow but, but um, yeah never like just run off and not, not so they come back huh oh yeah i mean ultimately we have your information like as soon as you sign up we have your id okay. you, you might have burned us but we know exactly where you are Right. You know, so what, like so nine times out of 10 you're not going to do mm. but then what can you do about it like you know where i am you can just call and say oh well, you can't say huh you can't say about it oh <laughs> that's a secret <laughs> yeah, you can't say that part. <laughs> i'm like now that we have discussed all this then maybe all these situations will come up <laughs> yeah bring it to the air Yeah, no. Luckily, yeah, nothing. Yeah, with my husband, like two people didn't. One person didn't pay, and the other one was like, "Oh, this is wrong. That is wrong." And I got so frustrated. I just refunded the amount, and then my cousin was like, "Why did you do that? You should have just kept it and say, yeah. gave a discount or something." So yeah, like, I think, uh, I think people like, like sometimes, for instance. doing a portrait oh i see the portrait so i'd like to have one done by you. Mm. well that's fine um that'd be great however uh it's got to be they got to understand that they came to me based on what they saw not based on what they think that i could do you know okay. so so they have to have the understanding that we can do it in the style that that you like mm. prior to asking right and so So for the most part I think uh, uh you could have an understanding clients that this is what I do and this is the way I do it it's not going to be the same with someone else someone else is going to do it a little different and you might like it better hmm. but just make sure that you have the decision with the artist that you want to go with before you uh, before you say no I didn't like that you know that's, that's kind of your fault that's what no I know for cosmetology and stuff that the license is a license for that doing it for them. Uh yeah, it's um basically we have to register with the the health department of the county that you're working in. Okay. And uh it's required that you do a health contact training. Okay. And so once you do that, that that uh what do you call it? <clears throat> basically gives you the, the right to acquire a license. So you have to basically show that you're keeping up on your on your safety and health standards. And other than that, there's, there's nothing else. There's, there's nothing no else. Uh, organization no, that not like, certified not like state board. Oh, okay. State board is uh, 
Yeah, they've been in, they've been in their practice for a long, long time. But we don't have that. That's good, actually. You said that. I know there's probably some people who are fishing with it, but at the same time, it's, I feel like I feel like they shouldn't have it in the hair industry. They should, because they're artists too. They're right. creating as well. So, how, uh, I mean, being regulated for health and safety is one thing, but but to be like fined for every little thing or to be, you know what I mean? It's a, uh, that's a sticky thing, you know. How long does the average tattoo take? Well, I mean, if you average your tattoos, it might be different for different people. But I think for me, I think average, on average, I probably each tattoo, you did the average, by the like four hours, maybe two to four hours. If you did a weekly average, you know what I mean? Something like that. Right. But they all vary. Yeah. My cousin was also saying that the art what you think and you know we want to replicate it might not turn out the same thing on paper or yeah, it's not, it's not everything. some people want it identical. Right. That's, oh, that's yes. hard. Yeah. I mean there are people out there who put that much time in. I know uh, one of my one of my buddies. He's a really awesome tattoo artist. He puts a lot of time into doing that with uh, colored pencils. He wants to be mm -hmm. the most realistic to get, and I think it's awesome. Uh, put that time aside to create that. Execute it. But then they charge also that much, no? Yeah, it's, uh, Might uh, be expensive. Oh yeah, you gotta, you gotta put a lot, a lot into your materials. She lives. Was there something about your portrait? Is he going to tattoo you on him? Oh, is there something I'm going to get a tattoo on him? No, I was out. He just mentioned that, huh? <laughs> My son uh, got my name on his knuckles. I thought that was pretty. Uh, I thought that was awesome. Yeah, that is a painful area, actually. Yeah. What about mom's name? His mom? Yeah. Yeah, on the other knuckle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, she would be jealous. Yeah. Oh yeah, she keeps that on both. I won't speak for what she would be, but. Uh, <laughs> Done both. That's nice. That's sweet. Did you do it or? I did. Oh, nice. Was he like, was it really like screaming and all on that? No, or? he's pretty tough. Yeah. Nice. Tattooed, um, tattooed all my kids. I've got some cool artwork on How many kids do you have? Five. Five kids? Mm -hmm. Waiting for the grandkids to grow up. Nice. One of them I only got like 
Six years now. And who cooks? You cook all your life, does? Oh, we both do. Tacos and everything. Have you tried cooking Indian? Indian yeah. Uh, I did. I did make a, uh, a vegetable curry one time. Uh, it came out pretty good. I think it was pretty good, but uh, I don't know how authentic it was. I wasn't as authentic. I didn't use a lot of uh, spices. Well, I did use a lot of spices, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't like, like break them down myself. You know what I mean? I didn't get my own coriander seeds and all that. I didn't do all the I just grabbed the jar. You know, <laughs> so I don't know how how authentic it was. We don't get ah. Uh, we also buy it from the store. Yeah. Must be like maybe in the interiors and all they must be getting that. Yeah, sometimes yeah we grow it in the garden and stuff. I would love to learn how to make like naan bread. That would be awesome. I can send you the video and all. Yeah, send me. You need to burn your hand, I think, in the tandoor. Oh, oh you yeah. can make it on the fire too. You can also make it on the fire. Yeah, but it won't be like in the tandoor, obviously. Right. The... I noticed that they that they have to put like a wet rag around their hand, or yeah, yeah, I guess stick it over there. Yeah, right, and it's hot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know how similar it is to flipping tortillas on the fire. Ah, <laughs> uh, it might be more uh, this no, thing because you wrap your. I think sometimes they wrap their hand also with the. Oh yeah, it's terrible. Sometimes you have. It's uh, like a oven. Putting your hand in the oven, right? Sometimes you have finger on your non bread. You <laughs> oh no 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 no! <laughs> Ix. <Eeks. laughs> so your cu- cuisine is the same, right? Mexican and Indian is like mostly same, like is, spicy and all. It's quite a bit. That's how mm-hmm. I. And I'm about, glad. Yeah. We uh we both eat with like tortilla. Right. You know we both have saucy saucy foods like gravy and all. Chili con carne and all that is kind of the same, but just different. Mm. I think I think where you guys use a lot of spices, we use the herbs from those spices right. from from the plant. You know what I'm saying? So. And then yours is mostly corn, and we have wheat. Wheat. You have corn, right? Corn, corn right? Yeah. And, and wheat is your your guys' uh, staple. Yeah, wheat. Yeah, wheat. Uh, tortilla. Yeah. yeah. We both worship. Uh, we both worship in a sim- similar fashion. Like as far as gods, you know what I'm saying? Like, like as far as uh, in the in the older culture, like more or less in the Aztec to Native cultures. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But, the, but there's other like yeah different different ways that that are real similar. Mm. Not necessarily Catholic. I know a lot of Mexican what is Catholic, but no. uh, is it seven and three? Indigenous, indigenous Hindu cultures. gods, like Hindu gods, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or we have uh, we have symbols, different, you know, ways of looking at things. So that powwow, you're part of that Native American. What is that? The powwow. Yeah, yeah. Are you part of that tribe? No, no. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm not Native. No, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm Native American. Yeah. Yeah.
the language, the culture, everything was, was destroyed. So they speak Spanish too, right? Um, Native Americans or they have different some languages? Do, and the reason being is because just like any other country, Spaniards came here too and forced them to learn that language. Mm. Just like the Philippines, just like you know, uh, the Dominican Republic, it's like all the places that speak Spanish, Spaniards are responsible for making them speak that. Yeah, even like in our thing, like we have like state languages, which we have to like, three languages are compulsory. Right. You have to learn that. Right. I noticed that it's definitely in European countries, mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, people who know, you know, several languages because of the language being so close together. Yeah, that's why my aunt was like, you should learn Spanish. And I'm like, I don't want to learn a fourth language, but now I regret it. I'm like, <laughs> I should have because that helps actually. Yeah, well. To connect to people. In California, that's mm. so close to our, Well, California used to be Mexico, so. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, years so U.S. occupied the... the there, was a, there was a war. <laughs> oh. There was a war and a fight and everything else. And they just, mm -hmm. Well, I think what it was is uh, the French The French was uh, owning a lot of the territory prior to the Spaniards. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there were several wars from the French to the Spanish to the to the natives, to the Spanish, to the New Mexicans, to the natives, so it was all, all kinds of different words. So did, were people killed and all? Uh, what's that? Were people killed and all? Killed? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. That's one of the biggest wars was right here in this southern part of the country. Mm. From Texas to California, was, you know, on the borderline of Mexico, it was, uh, it was a, a good wild time, I guess. Yeah, like India-Pakistan. Yeah. They, yeah, they was, divided the country. It was one, actually. Yes, they also experienced border wars. Yeah. My grandparents did because they were from Pakistan. They had to leave everything to come to India. Right. Wow. Because all the Hindus were leaving because they said that it's a Muslim country now. So yeah. now everything is stabilized. I I guess. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think we can visit. Like, if I ask, means you'll still be scared to visit that part. Yeah, it'll, it'll take a long time for uh, just like here, too. Mm. Still, to this day, people are still fighting. Yeah. These certain things. This is how they fight. It takes time, man. Everyone, but at the same time, it's it's never really one way. It's, there's always going to be a difference on my part, or again, whatever. So, Actually, there's no point in doing that. But that happened in the past. Now, I mean, I feel what's the point in fighting? Live amicably, right? Yeah. Now? Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, absolutely. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, like uh, you and I, we're not going to fight over nothing, but mm. the people that are mm. similar to us that are in higher situations, you know, that they feel like they have a reason to fight over something. I think it just all depends on your status, mm. where you put yourself in life. You can uh, definitely be somebody who wants to fight all the time. Spoiling your life and somebody else is too. Could be. It could be, yeah. But sometimes people look at it differently. You know, like, for instance, uh, if you think about our, our, I guess what they call our forefathers, the ones who created the country, you know, 
Uh, who knows how much they really cared about anything except for their name being prosperous. Right. People use it in the wrong way nowadays, like oh, like a victim card. Yeah. What happened in the past? Right. Not necessarily with them. In India, we have so many languages and religions. Yeah. There's quite a bit of harmony. I was seeing a uh, map one day of India, like showed like different. I don't know what you would call it, but if it's like provinces, maybe I don't know, but different states, states, yeah. states or whatever, and then, and and how the, uh, the culture of the food is so different. Was, yeah, everything. Is, yeah, that, every yeah. state has different. Has a different culture. Like in, in families, also you might find like Spanish families, also like there might be different kinds. Kinds of food like that, it is like so. It might not be the same. Like two Hindu families might be following something different. Right, right. You should visit with your family. Go on a tourist like. Yeah, I've only seen videos. I don't <laughs> really know nothing about the mm. Yeah, you have to do your research because weather and all that probably. So I was seeing this video one time and it was shockingly amazing that this guy was he was doing a dedication to, to God or whatever and, and uh, he raised his leg uh -huh. straight in the air for the rest of his life. Oh like and some people were having their just having their hand up like this for the rest uh -huh. of their life. That was a dedication to God. I don't know. Do, do <laughs> Maybe do uh, probably, maybe. And but you can I, see that their arm has been up so long that it's stiff and skinny and old and mm. starting to deteriorate. Or, you know what I mean? It just looks crazy. Like, yeah. I don't know how they keep their arm up so long. But yeah. Tie it. yeah, some people are crazy like that. Like one or two you might find. Because the population is so much like you get different type of yeah. minds. So it's very crowded out there. So yeah. that is... That yeah, and, and when we come here, we feel like there's no people out here, <laughs> so lonely. Is that how it is? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's depressing for us. <laughs> yeah, that's so <laughs> like so much land. <laughs> Why is there so much land? <laughs> yeah, like and it's so empty. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. And you imagine China's like that too. Yeah, but. China is a more uh, bigger country, it's like US, no? India is a smaller country, oh, okay. so with space and everything, yeah, it's a problem. They don't, they don't have laws of, uh, well, we don't, but, but I know I know China, when they started to get over that, they started having laws like you can't only have one kid. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? That kind of yeah. yeah, they definitely promote it, but not like. They don't kill kids. Or, I don't know. We had heard that China, they were killing and all. But yeah, I don't know how far it's in, true. Yeah. In, in India, they encourage that you should have less number of kids. But there's no rule as such. Rules are meant to be broken in India. <laughs> like, we're starving. How many kids we got? Four kids. Your fault. You're going to have so many. The same way, I guess, out uh, here, but we just, I guess, we got so many uh, government programs that feeds everyone. You know, it's, because the population is less, right? In India, the population is too much, so it's like you, then you should consider your, like, the population is less, so you can have more, I think, kids. So were you like born here or you were born in Mexico? No, I was born in 
So your parents are still there? Uh, my mom's in Mexico. My dad. Mm. Do you go to visit your mom? Oh, there's too many, uh, many things going on over there. <laughs> Mexico people visit, right? Huh? Mexico people visit, no? Yeah, yeah, they, they come over here. My mom comes over here. Uh, okay. On the you can't, can't go there. It's not that safe, huh? It's just uh the stress mm. yeah we wanted to go to that place what is that what is that there that place tevana not tevana that one can cancun cancun okay yeah so it's not not safe over there no and the tourist area is here okay mm. my mom lives in uh my mom lives in uh, gang area yeah where the people are at yes Mm. Not that uh, not that we have to bring up that it's just a, a nice event. We yeah. did go to Ensenada. That was nice. Ensenada. Yeah. That's not too far from here. Yeah, Bufa Dore we visited. Yeah, through the cruise actually. Oh, okay. So it was nice. Yeah, but went to uh, Kabul. Kabul, so, like Pakistan. Kabul, no, Kabul and Lucas. So mm. were the. Uh, yes. Mexico has a Baja California Peninsula. Ah, uh, Baja California. I've heard of that. Very tip. Mm. Very tip. Yeah, I like the artwork on the pots and what is that? The kitchen items and all they have. Yeah, yeah. I bought those. Yeah, really you know, beautiful. The, the culture, the art, culture, art is real similar. Yeah, to the colorful. Yeah, I like uh, that. Yeah. What about dancing? You have salsa and what else? Uh, well, well I don't. But uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> I don't have any of those dancing, but um, yeah, what else? There's all kinds of. Uh, so the language is only Spanish, or you have different other languages too? There are native languages um, that are that are more or less like Mayan style. Or I don't know how much there is an uh, Aztec language, but I know Mayan style language. Uh, I want to say there's a, a I, I can't remember exactly how to say it, but it's kind of like Petupal or something like that, which is a dialect of native people before. Mm. But um, those are all like, like, those are all deep, deep languages that you, you people from like uh, the jungles and People who are, who are elders that that know, uh, I think I think for uh, for the most part, um, Spanish the Spanish Inquisition uh, they came over they they destroyed everything that they thought that would be that would go against them. So like non-Spanish, yeah, yeah. So like you're not going to speak that language, and that's not what they're talking about. So, and in um, India, they. They pretty much kept uh, all the cultures are intact. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, now they are now they are promoting it even more because yeah. In, so, but then English and all is also there. Yeah. And education, education. I don't know how it is in Mexico whether they promote education or college and all. I think in a lot of uh, a lot of the cities. Mm. But a lot of the older, small towns, that kind of thing, that's still very poor. Mm. And their schools are very, very uh, orthodox, like old. Yeah, it's old style. They definitely don't have all the technology that the kids have to do here. Mm. That's pretty sad. Hopefully, it changes with time. So they don't, uh, I mean, like uh, accept it or something like if. Well, the problem I think over there is could be that the government doesn't have absolute control over what happens. Oh. 
you know, there's a lot of uh, other high power people there that mm -hmm. wait around. And That's they, pretty sad, actually. It's like the money is people don't way. A lot of people with their hands up. Uh, I imagine it's kind of hard to have a structure that works all the time. A lot of people pleasing and all. Yeah. In India, actually, the poor people they focus on like want to study and all. So they give education and all to them. Those are really bright. They promote them, sponsor their education and all that stuff. Yeah. And then they have a lot of donations, like was the church, the temple. Programs yeah. and our culture is more inclusive, like you know, in India, though there are tensions, but it's not that frequent or visible or stuff. Without, without yeah, I mean, if you want to work, you have an opportunity, or if you want to study. Yeah, but the poor people sometimes they have to make more effort. Like, if you're born in a middle class or rich family, then you get it. Like, your parents will send you to school and stuff. My mother had to study and work at the same time to finish her college. She had it the hard way. That's why people want to move from Mexico to US, right? For yes, progress. I mean, for progress, people see an opportunity that mm. you can buy into. You can't. You don't have the same opportunities there. But I think for a lot of the times, I'm sure that most people who, you know, come here from other countries, they have that idea as well. Like, okay, opportunities. You have to go over there, this, this, this. And then you end up training yourself to learn those specific things. This is what I want to do. I want to. I don't know, whatever it is, uh, uh, whether it be a, a restaurant, uh, some type of other business, liquor store, uh, whatever it is, you tell yourself, I'm going to invest my time and my everything into this business. You're going to learn this business. When you're from here, you don't invest time in shit. You, well, whatever, I'll just work over there or I'll work over there. You don't have that train of thought that I have an opportunity, you know what I'm saying? Where if you're from somewhere else, you have that train of thought. You're thinking like, I have an opportunity I can take advantage of. Right. Here, we just take advantage of. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? We don't even take care. Yeah, like we uh, just take advantage of the fact that it's so free. That's mm. not. It's, it's that bad, but I feel like I don't feel like it's the. Uh, I don't feel like it's anyone's fault in particular, but I feel like it could be. I feel like it would be like if, if our school system had a better insight on, on what our country can give you and how you can take advantage of stuff. We need to teach more about small business, mm. teach more about investment, teach more about these mm. types of things in normal school, not in college where you have to pay to get this information. Mm. Why not learn it first so that you can be a contributor to society rather than Someone who's just taking from it. You know right. What I'm but it's not set up like that. Because if that was an opportunity to, for it to be that way, there would be a lot of millionaires. And the people who make the money wouldn't make no money. True. Right. That's you see what I'm saying? True. So, yeah, people take it for granted, right? So if we uh, allow, if that was the thing, we would all be very rich, and the rich would not be rich anymore. They would be sharing. Yeah. And so that can't be a thing. They have to be in control. It's never going to be that. Mm. 
yeah you all like people have to pay so much like my friend and all for h1 and all working your 5000 dollars and all because you fly overseas right to come yeah to extend and stuff it's a vicious game mm. if you understand that it's a game technique like the people from Samoa and all they have it with the stick or whatever this so for us uh being from southern california and being mexican american there is a style there is a a certain uh black and gray uh style that is popular for that and it, and a lot of it has to do with uh commemorating like the chara which is like the uh, the girl with the hair and the bullets and yeah. the and the big hat you know right. what i'm saying like the sombrero sombrero and like different different um art such as that uh, whether it be uh, it could even be like some old aztec statues you know that kind of thing Mayan statues so there is a definitely uh culture in that right me personally i i never really got into it 100% to where i could say like i specialize in that I've always kind of stuck to realism. Like, not that any of that is not realism. And some of it, like say, for instance, the statues and portraits and that kind of thing, I love to do. But as far as like, um, uh, like what you were saying earlier, as far as the colors and the, the pottery and the clothing and all that, it's a whole different the style in right. itself. You know? so, even uh, that tattooing style is not not only the style but uh, they use different kind of needle or because i was watching it on national geography like in uh, um new zealand or somewhere that side uh they do it with like yeah yeah the handle and poke yeah yeah they'll, they'll do uh, there's different ones there's the hand poke there's the tap uh, and they use different materials some will, yeah. use, some will use ivory bone uh, yeah. bamboo you know just depending on the culture right but uh, yeah a lot of islander island style cultures will will do that i mean even uh yeah japan uh i had a friend that went to uh thailand uh-huh. from india to learn how to do the tattooing in the local format or whatever uh-huh. so he stayed up there for a year i guess and then came back yeah there's uh there's a huge uh there's a huge culture especially in, in china and even in japan it's a huge tattoo culture mm-hmm. yeah, everybody has their own, own style right yeah after leaving india like i miss it more than like when you are in india so oh yeah it's kind of hard yeah you yeah. you realize the importance of your country you are taking right. it for granted i think after all ink master and all it it's gotten a little more popular in india now where the yes. newer generation is getting a little more tattoos and stuff like that. yeah it's true um as in this tv show come about like it definitely got more popular and even well even here you know yeah. um, for the longest time people were still proud of me my even my some of my own family were like oh man you're gonna you're not gonna do something else for your career you're just tattooing you know they, they, they at one time thought it was
Yeah, I always wanted to tattoo in India, but I think after coming to US, I was more bold and open. Learn so many different things, which I don't think back there I would have learned. So, this country in a way has given me a lot. Yeah, it's uh, uh, for me. I, I had to. I, I was I was recommended, and I ended up having an opportunity, which I said was before it was a apprenticeship, but I didn't know it was, and. Um, and I just knew that since it didn't work out there, that I was going to have to really push to, to uh, keep it going. Yeah, it was kind of funny. Like, initially, when we were watching Ink Master, my, I, my husband wanted to tattoo, and I was like, no, no tattoo. The Bible says no tattoo. That. And I went and tattooed myself. And, and then he reminded me of that. Like, oh, you told me not to tattoo, and you went to tattoo yourself. It's kind of funny. <laughs> now I'm telling him, he's like, again, change his mind. I don't want to do it. I need a break. You want, what do you want to tattoo? What did you want to tattoo? If you want to. You'll design it yourself? Yeah. Like, Alice. Maybe a favorite team or something. I waved at her. You can pause it actually. <laughs> Yeah, he, he has a lot of patience, your client. Scott has a lot of patience. Yeah. How can you put your hand like that or without moving? It's uh, So you finished the shading today, I guess. Well, what I'm going to do now at this point, what I like to do is um, watch it real well. I like to use some um, vacuum, which is basically a uh, cleaner, and it will uh, also take some of the swelling away. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to soak it with this and put a piece of plastic over it for about five, ten minutes. And... Uh, for there, I'll be able to see like where it is that I need to touch. But we're pretty close to being done with it. You can make out a little bit of swelling. Yeah. So this will take some of that swelling away. But And then he can't go out in the sun for how many days? Usually it's about a two week process to be on. He's going to be a piece of plastic study. I thought it is, depends on the size also of the tattoo, right? What's that? Depends on the size of the tattoo. As far as the healing time? No, no. the one you can't go in the sun. Yeah, I thought well, it was three, four days or something. 
Well, no, it's, it's usually two weeks, no matter what. If it's all in front of it, the body has to heal all the way through. Two weeks? I thought it was a week. Yeah, if you go too soon, uh, well, if you go too soon while the wound is still open, then you can get an infection. Right. But if you go, well, if the wound closes and then you go and then the sun hits it for a long uh, extended time, you could create scar tissue under your skin. So you don't want it to, you don't want the skin to, to take any of that abuse. And he can shower with this, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Normally, you can shower with that too. This, this is temporary. What I'm doing right now. Um, this is for you want to get out, man? All right. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. work, you know, mm-hmm. and and for something like this, because we want it to move, but you can't, you know, uh, move we really want that area to come down, right? So, add it. Right. So, that function to work in whatever you put, is that like a antiseptic kind of thing? Or yeah, something? yeah, and it has a little uh, lidocaine, like a four point five percent or something oh. like that. So it'll it'll also like uh, it'll uh, it a numb bit. it a little bit, take, take some of that burn off, and go back to that. So what happens like in cases like where the client doesn't follow the instructions? Have you had some such cases where? The- yeah, I mean it happens often. Uh, Either the tattoo doesn't heal, you know, as well as you want it to. Sometimes it does. Sometimes people just heal a lot faster. They have they have a better immune response. Yeah, response. Yeah. No, um, but has it had any effect on the tattoo? Like it becomes distorted. Yeah, it could. Yeah, oh. it could. You can, well, you can lose you can lose saturation. Mm. So so it won't be as solid as it should have been. Or, then you have to fix it again, huh? That's yeah, you do the case. So you charge for that one? Yeah, if it's something if it's something that you can tell that it was uh negative, yeah, definitely charge for it. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, you know, if it's if it's something that that you can smell in that little area that you say, mm-hmm. you can go ahead and set it up. Yeah, I followed your instructions to the T, so Yeah, so it feels that nice. Yeah. Awesome. It's really nice. Still there and still original color and oh, it's yeah. not even cool. faded. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. The other one too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Two for one. Uh, two two in one day. Excuse me one second, I'll be right back. Yours is done too. Uh-huh. Was it on the hand? Mm-hmm. It, it's hurting. One of the larger area. No? Mine was a smaller one. So. <laughs> that much is like I, I don't think I'll be able to stay. And then she has to color it too, right? Yeah. So next time or huh? the next time it will be colored or now? Next time. Next time. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you could do tattoos in parts. Yeah, absolutely. So mm-hmm. pieces get mm-hmm. Sometimes it takes a long time to get the done I don't know if you are okay with yeah, filming. Okay. Yeah, that's a, I was like, yeah. let me ask you before. Yeah, no problem. Definitely, it's a special session. Like somebody who's like very like committed and loyal. He's about to see working, but she's 
you look a very young artist no you maybe in college yes and you like it yeah i like it a lot like doing um like job something what you love doing yeah i love it a That's true. Yeah, that's true. Really yeah. 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 Mentally this thing training, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for giving your time.